Welcome to iLecture Online. In this video, we're going to see three examples where we can use the Dirac delta function in three dimensions to represent charge in three different situations. First, we can represent a point charge at the origin. Secondly, we can represent a dipole where one charge is at the origin and another charge is away from the origin. And thirdly, we can represent the charge on a spherical shell. Now remember that when we place a charge on a, on a shell, there's only charge at that very location, a distance r away from the origin, and it's an infinitesimally thin distance. In other words, there's charge in an exact location on the shell, not beyond it, not inside of it. And because of that, again, we need to use the Dirac delta function in order to represent it correctly. So let's see what that looks like. The first one is, kind of straightforward. So we have the density of the charge as a function of r. Now we realize that there's no charge anywhere but at the origin where x, y, and z is zero. So therefore we need a Dirac delta function, which means there's charge at the origin and there's no charge anywhere else. And since all of the charge is located at the origin at zero volume, the density has to be infinite at that location. Again, that's how we describe a Dirac delta function. So the charge density is equal to the charge, Q, times the Dirac delta function in three dimensions. Why can we say that? Well, if we take the function as a function of R, and we multiply it times dV, we can say, well, we can write this as Q times the Dirac delta function dV. We can take Q out of the integral because that's a constant. So now we have the integral over all of space of the Dirac del delta function dV, but by definition, that is equal to 1, so it ends up q times 1, or simply q. In other words, if we integrate over the charge density, over all of the volume of all space, we simply get the charge, which means that this is indeed the correct representation of the Dirac delta with the Dirac delta function of the charge density of a charge at the origin. But what if we have two charges, like a dipole? We have a negative charge at the origin, and a positive charge some distance a away from the origin. a can be in any direction. So again, we can represent the charge at the origin in the exact same way, except in this case we have a negative q instead of a positive q, but this represents the one of the two charges of the dipole at the origin. But now we have to represent the other charge away from the origin. We do that, of course, it's a positive charge q, but we use the delta function of r minus a. This places the position of the Dirac delta function at the location of the other charge. With other words, it's infinite at that location, zero everywhere else. So this is a good representation of the second charge. Add them together, and that would be the representation of the two charges of the dipole. Now going to the shell, we have a shell of radius r, and we have charge on that shell. So if we take the total charge q divided by the total area of that sphere, we can simply say that's q divided by 4 pi r squared, and this then becomes the charge density of the charge on the sphere. It's centered about the origin, a distance r away from the origin. So now the charge density is going to be the charge density, q divided by 4 pi r squared, but we need a delta function to indicate that it only exists at a distance r away from the origin. So r, little r, which is the variable, minus the radius of the sphere, that places the charge on the sphere and that gets this charge density across the sphere. So we use the Dirac delta function in three dimensions to put the charge at a distance r away from the origin. And again, that's the way we can represent it correctly because it's only, it only exists at the distance exactly r away from the origin, not beyond it, not anywhere closer, and it's infinitesimally thin, so that's why the Dirac delta function is perfect for representation like that as well. And that's a good way to represent the three forms of the charges that we see illustrated here. 